Welcome, Gore Hounds. This is Brain Damage welcoming you to SOB, the true independence. There was really only two choices if you wanted to shoot on video. You made a porno film, or you made a horror film. Most of the time they have these crazy, outrageous, silly plots. They're cheesy, they're low budget. A lot of times they just can do what they want. Directors have freedom to do whatever they want. It was subversive. And it was subversive in the sense that, you know, this is what the world thought was good. And this is what we think is good. This is the story we think need to be told. I grew up with George Lucas in college, and he did Star Wars, and I did Blood Cult. If our movies 20, 15, 20 years ago were shot with the cameras they have available today, some of these guys would be already making million dollar pictures. There's all those people out there, well, the camera could have been better. Yes, I know that, but the camera I have is the camera you're being recorded on right now, which is the way it's supposed to be for this shot on video, The True Independence, because this is how we shot in the 80s and 90s. And I don't have the money to go buy a red camera, a high def camera. I do not have the time. I do not have the patience to pull out a manual and learn how to run it. So for the poor guy renting the movie, it's not till he got home and put it in his video machine that he would say how much cheaper mine was than some of these big movies that had real money to play with. That's the worst thing. Like, these aren't movies. When are you going to make a real movie? Well, we've made a real movie. It's you just don't like the format. The video category was not popular at the time we were doing it, so we were really guerrilla filmmaking. We were making our dreams happen, and we were actually getting it done. And off we went to the video stores. Hey, we got a new product. If you like Day of the Reaper and made money off of that, we've got Twisted Illusions. The magic or the moment your movie becomes a real movie to you is when you can go see it on a shelf, you know, watch somebody else pick it up, and then you see them put it back down, and you're all defeated, you know. So customers would rent it completely unaware that I was the person who had filmed this thing. And they would bring it back and kind of toss it on the counter. Ah, oh, God, this is a piece of shit. They shot it on video. I think people were just biased to the look. If you saw a feature film that looked a little soap opera and the craftsmanship wasn't into it, um, then, you know, that was a tough, it was a tougher sell. Ah, uh, they're so bad. A lot of my movies are awful, so there's many least favorites. The best of the worst horror films ever made. I'm not going to argue with the critics over Blood Lake, please. The facts speak the truth. 75% of the films I produce <laughs> are all shot on video. I, I know they're flawed, I know what's wrong with them, but I like them. I think they're good, I think they're, they're, they're fun movies to watch. They're not just something slapped together, you know. I like shot on video movies because they're the work of fans and they want to communicate to other fans and there's enthusiasm. I'll tell you why there's more shot on video horror movies than any other genre. That, and that is because horror fans are the most passionate movie fans in the world. I did Deadly Scavengers, that's me as a cockroach. And I also did Time Enough, um, and that's me as a great alien. You know, there was a lot of people that wanted to make some horror movies and you could with, with video. So it was revolutionary. There was this sort of punk rock, like DIY mentality about these shot on video movies, and they were getting into video stores. And I thought, this is so cool. Maybe I could make something like that. You can build your own dolly. You can build your own uh, camera crane, uh, and, and all the, the editing techniques and all was all the filmmaking techniques were there. Just use video and do it on do it on the cheap. You just got ordinary, charming people who are movie fans like you and I trying to make their own and a lot of the times these people weren't making making these movies to get rich these movies weren't going to make a lot of money they knew that they were just making them for fun i'm not going to get rich on any of those things uh but i the, the real payoff is in having people see them and i hope uh, i hope they continue to live on and lots of people see them i know i never saw a penny i never expected to really i, I didn't do it for money you know it was the opportunity to make a movie I will continue to shoot movies till the day I die, uh, whenever that is. I, I, you know, I'm going on film 35, and I hope to do another 35 uh, before it's time for me to say farewell. And uh, you just see their, the passion they have filmmaking, and they kind of 
goes on to you. Like, I could do this. Because that's really what it takes to shoot something on video with low to no budget. Um, it really takes a lot of obsession and heart and drive. It's a part of history, and whether, whether they're good or bad films, they, you know, they are unique and they, and they made a mark on cinema. It's cool to see those movies of that era get appreciated and people not to take them so seriously and to enjoy them for fun movies that they are. It was when I first started this back in 1987. I never would have thought that I could make a living from it. I was, I was a little shocked because I had no idea. You know, I knew we were doing something special at the time, but I had no idea how special. It's, it's fascinating that this is carried on. This is my legacy. This is what I leave in the world. This is a celebration. This is an absolute celebration of the people that went out and made their own movie and got it out there. Yeah, I'm shooting a, uh, no, roll this, roll this. Um, I'm shooting an interview for, uh, uh, it's, it's a thing called Shot on Video. 